Hi guys. Hi guys. Uh, hi guys. Since the last time I did like a little story time and did my makeup, I've realized how much I enjoy doing that. So I'm here to share another trauma story for you guys. You know, just I I like when we share things. I'm gonna do my makeup again. This is like a trial run because my seven year anniversary is coming up this Saturday. Seven years, I know. Why aren't we married? Why don't we live together? Those are the questions I get all over TikTok and they're super upset. I'm 22, he's 24. We met when I was 15, he was 17. We're in no rush to move in or get married. He's still in nursing school. That's why, okay? We're still very young. Seven years sounds like a long time and it is, but that's because we started off really young. So, you know, we're, you are still little children figuring things out. So that's why we don't live together and that's why we're not moved in together, okay? Before I start, I just wanna tell you guys that I know I'm not a professional makeup artist and that my skills are very basic and kind of mediocre. I've never claimed to be a professional makeup artist, nor would I ever because, you know, as you guys can see, or you guys will see, or you guys have seen, my makeup skills are very subpar. So um, without further ado, here's the story of when I was almost sex trafficked. So my skin is clean and moisturized. First thing I'm gonna use is my L'Oreal Infallible foundation it's in the shade 415 and i mix it with this sort of skin tint that's a little more tan just to give me the right color and i got it from sephora it's the tarte maracuja tinted hydrator in the shade 22s light sand so this story takes place in 20 2017 so I had just graduated from high school and in case you guys didn't know I was a fall admit to my college which means that the spring semester of my freshman year they didn't take me in either because of like not enough dorm space or just whatever administrative issue there was I started in the fall during the spring I enrolled in a couple classes in my community college but I didn't enroll in a lot I didn't understand like the prerequisites and general education in general like I just didn't know that like once I got to college I would be basically a semester behind because I didn't enroll in enough classes so I had a lot of free time a lot for those of you who don't know my dream is to be an actress um, and then at the time I was like trying to take advantage of the time that I had because I had nothing going on so I was like why don't I just try to get as many auditions as possible but also at the time I had no idea what to do. Like I wasn't a part of any agency. I didn't even know how to find auditions. So I was kind of just like using Google as my, my manager. But then I remembered that I was about to go to a school which is known for its, um, like its arts program, arts film theater program. I went to Chapman University and the Dodge College, which was the film school is a really really good one so the duffer brothers went there i think that's their name they created stranger things and there's just like a lot of notable alumni who just created and wrote and starred in a lot of famous projects i thought that maybe i could find something within my school that i could audition for and just travel down to la while i have this semester off also in case anybody's wondering why i didn't enroll in the film school is because i was not qualified i never would have gotten in okay now I'm going to conceal a little bit and for my conceal, I look really white right now. I have a ring light on me. That's a little warmer. Let me I think that's pretty good. So now I'm going to conceal and I'm going to use my NARS concealer and this is in the shade Radiant. No, it's not. That's just what the concealer is called. It's in the shade Light 2 Vanilla. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna put this under my eyes and on any spots. Also, another side note, because it's my anniversary, it's more of a special occasion, even though I don't think we're really gonna do anything that special because we're both lazy. Um, I just, I wanna have a little bit more of a dramatic look because when else am I gonna get to do this, you know? Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Okay, so yes, I was scouring, scouring, scouring. I was looking. 
for things related to Chapman or Dodge. I was looking online, I was looking on backstage, just looking up Chapman and Dodge auditions, seeing if anybody had posted anything on any casting websites or if there was anything on like the school's website or homepage or just anything like that. concealer done next thing I'm gonna do is contour and I'm going to use Anastasia contour stick this is in the shade fawn so I had finally come across an open casting call I think it was just like on Google I don't remember exactly but it was like the day that that open casting call had posted was the day that I searched it. So that's why I hadn't seen it before. It was very new. I clicked on it. It said it was related to Chapman. And obviously I was very happy about that because all my searches were, you know, looking for auditions related to Chapman or Dodge. I clicked on it. I saw that it was for a short film that one of the Chapman students was writing, directing, producing, just working on. And I thought that this was such a great opportunity because if I got a role that was related to the school, maybe it would better my chances of transferring into the Dodge program. So everything in my mind was just like optimistic. I was just super excited. Nothing could bring me down. So they, on the page, it said that it was only looking for um, video submission auditions. I don't think they were doing anything in person. Um, I'm not sure why. Well, I'm sure why now. I know now. It didn't bother me. It just made me more happy because I didn't have to fly down there just to audition. I could, you know, send in a video submission. So the, um, the video submission was just reading a short dramatic monologue that they had given and you know giving a slate so your name your age your height just stuff like that and just giving like a full body view your profile your back your front just all in one video i did that the next day i sent it in and i just waited to hear back keep in mind i understand that like i should have been more careful but i was 18 which i get is still an adult but i was naive i was 18 i was excited about getting an opportunity to be in a short film and i thought it was completely safe because it was related to my school i didn't think anything sketchy was going on i thought that all the shooting would be you know on campus or i would meet everybody on campus and i had friends who were at chapman already so everything was just kind of safe in my mind I don't think I heard back for maybe like a week. I'm not sure, but it wasn't like a super short wait. Like I thought that I hadn't gotten anything because I know that if you don't get it, they don't really, or they don't usually reach out. So it was a week before I heard anything. And what I heard was that I got it. No callbacks, no second audition tape, just I got it. Again, I'm very new to this like industry, to this profession. It's my dream, but I was always focused on school. My parents didn't support this dream until they saw how persistent I was with it. So their support didn't really start until like after high school, after I graduated. So I was very new to all this. I didn't know anything. So I didn't know that, you know, getting something after one little audition tape was weird, okay? I didn't realize that. Fuck, my camera's gonna die. Guys, I'm really sorry, but it looks like I'm gonna have to finish filming on my phone. Um, I don't have two battery packs because I'm an idiot, so phone it is. Okay, anyways. Oh yeah, we were talking about my stupidity. But yeah, I didn't know that was weird, so I just kind of, I just let my optimism and excitement take over and I was like, damn, I booked it. My first job, go me. Okay. Contour done. Now I'm going to do a little bit of Rare Beauty Blush. This is in the shade Love. So I told my mom and her also being very new to all this and not really understanding the industry and like what's normal and what's, you know, safe. 
she was very excited for me too and she was also very comforted by the fact that this was a chapman production she had the same comforts in mind as me like my friends would be on campus it's a place that i'd visited before it's not a far distance like all that stuff so after finding out that I got the role, I started emailing with the director who was a woman, maybe like late twenties. Um, she looked really nice. I saw from her profile picture on her email and she sent me a picture of herself just so she, I would know who to look for when she picked me up from the airport because I was going alone. She told me that some of the perks that I would be receiving is they would pay for a hotel room for me, they would have a car service so I wouldn't need to pay for an Uber, food would be provided, like I just felt so special. Again, I didn't know that short films didn't have that much money to spend on their actors, at least not um, like college, university projects like this, productions, so I I didn't know. This whole story is basically about things that I didn't know. Um, now I'm going to bake, bake, bake using my air spun loose powder. I would be leaving in a week, a week from when I found out I got it. So me and the um, director had been talking every day for a week. I got her number, we would text. Blah, blah, blah. I should have been suspicious that she never got on the phone with me. I'm suspicious of it now because I know now, but at the time I didn't think anything of it again. But we were basically just talking about like my clothing size and just things that I would need to prepare for. They also sent me a script, guys. That's something that I will cut me some slack on. They sent me a full on script of like the short film and it seemed so legit. I mean, like they went as far asked you type this out or whatever like it was it, it was just intense okay everything seemed super real and that script really solidified everything for me and then i'm gonna do my brows i have this age perfect l'oreal brow magnifying pencil i just got this from walgreens this is in the shade soft brown sorry if you guys hear that creaking it's the toilet that i'm sitting on after talking for about three days, the fourth day is when they asked for the pictures. So I was supposed to bring my own bikinis for a beach scene and they wanted to see pictures of me in it before you know I brought them because they wanted to make sure it was the right one. Or so they said. But I sent like four pictures of myself in bikinis to this email and they said they were all great and I should bring all of them. And I was like, cool. That is also the first red flag when I'm looking back on that now. I'm like, I, you're providing all these things and you're like, you're sending me the script and you're telling me that there's hair and makeup, but you need me to bring my own bikinis. Like you're asking me for all my clothing size. So why can't you just get the bikinis you want me to wear? Like, why do I need to bring my own bikinis? And why do you need to see me in them right now? You know what I mean? Ugh, it did make me feel a little bit grimy at the time because I just, I've never been someone to like send pictures like that to other people. Like, yeah, I'll post me and my friends in our bikinis at the beach having a good day, but like, that's different to me. Like sending it to someone I don't know is very violating. So even at the time, even with all my excitement and optimism and just stupidity, I did think that was a little bit weird and I wasn't totally comfortable with that. I honestly think I would have done anything they asked me to because my mentality at the time was, that I was too new and inexperienced to say no to anything. I didn't think that I had the right to say no. I needed to say yes to every opportunity and to anything anybody asked of me if given an opportunity because I needed to get my foot in the door in some way. As long as it wasn't ethically or like morally compromising, I would have done it. So we didn't talk much more until the day that I was leaving for Orange County. Also, I didn't know this at the time. <laughs> We're just following a pattern now. But apparently Anaheim is like one of the largest sex trafficking, child trafficking cities in the United States. But a couple people told me about it. And once I got to Chapman, my professors told me about it because we I was in like criminology classes and stuff. So I don't, I'm gonna do more research on that, but I think that's so, so strange. Like. Obviously sad, tragic, disgusting, and those people who are 
participants in that need to go to hell. But I just always thought it was strange because Anaheim is known for, to be like one of the happiest places in the world because of like Disneyland. And if you think about it, I guess because Anaheim is populated with kids and stuff that it could be more advantageous. Be careful when you go to Anaheim. I'm going to now set my brows. I'm gonna set my brows with my Gimme Brow eyebrow gel, looks like this. Okay, so the day arrives where I'm supposed to be leaving to Orange County. My mom drops me off at the airport. I'm excited, I'm bubbly, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, my boyfriend Robert actually was super sketched out about this from the beginning and I didn't listen to him. I didn't even tell him about the bikini pictures that they asked me to send. So I'm not really sure like what about this set him off from the very beginning, but he was kind of trying to convince me not to go and like he just thought that there was something up with it. I think it's just like a boyfriend's intuition or something. But of course I didn't listen to him because I was too excited to have an acting opportunity. So. Yeah, I went. Now I'm going to set my contour with Hula bronzer. Here's where the plot thickens. I get off the plane and I start texting the director saying that, hey, I've arrived at the airport. Also, I still haven't talked to this person over the phone. And usually like you call someone when they're picking you up from the airport, but we just kept texting. I don't even think I ever bothered to call them because we had never talked on the phone, so I was just used to texting this person. But I land and I text her that I'm here and I will wait by baggage claim. And she goes, cool, I'll meet you there. Okay, I'm gonna use this NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette for my eyes. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just put this white shade all over. So I go down to baggage claim and I'm looking for someone who looks similar to the profile picture of the email. Keep in mind, the person on the profile picture was like a late 20 year old female who was Asian, who looked very perky and quirky and someone that you could trust to be around and to pick you up from an airport even though you've never met them in person. You know what? I usually don't like to judge people by their looks and like be mean about it, but this person is a sex trafficker so I don't give a fuck. This sweaty, big, greasy looking man, white man, comes up to me where I'm waiting for the girl to come get me. And he goes, are you Rachel? I'm here to take you to a location. I don't even know where location is. They never told me where we were going once they picked me up from the airport. And I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't say anything for a little bit because I was so shocked. I'm like, who are you? Why are you approaching me? Why do you know my name? Now I'm going to put this light brown mixed a little bit with this brown into my crease. When I finally, you know, have the nerve to speak again, I was like, oh, um, who are you? Because I was expecting, I don't remember her name, but I was expecting her. And he was like, oh, she's waiting in the garage downstairs. I'm her driver. I'm here to pick you up and bring you to her. And I was like, oh. And in my head, I was like, I feel like she would have said something instead of cool, meet you at baggage claim. Like, I feel like she would have told me that a man who I was unfamiliar with would be coming to pick me up. I'm just gonna keep building up my crease because like I said, I want this to be a little more dramatic. So I don't care if it's a little darker than usual. So now my like adrenaline and my instincts are kicking in because I'm like, there's just, th this is weird. Like, this is so strange. Like, there's no way that she would have just sent someone to come pick me up knowing that I might be sketched out by it and not have called me to tell me like that she wasn't gonna be the one to meet me at baggage claim. So this is where my survival instincts kick in. So I tell him, okay, can you wait right here for a second? I left something upstairs and I have to go ask someone to help me find it. He was like, okay, sure. So I hike it while I'm walking because I don't want to seem suspicious, but I go to the escalator and I go upstairs back to where people check in to go through security. And I tell a security guard that I think that I'm in trouble. 
I, that's all I say. Security guard asked me what's wrong and I said that I, I was supposed to be meeting someone to pick me up from the airport, but someone else showed up and the person I was supposed to meet didn't say that someone else was coming to get me. So I don't know if this man was impersonating the woman the whole time or this man is just like trying to take the place of the woman who was supposed to pick me up. I had no idea what was going on and I explained this all to the security guard and he wants me to take him over to like the ledge where we can see down to baggage claim so we can see this man. So I take him over there to point out where the man was and he's fucking gone. He's gone. He, he dipped. Now I'm gonna take this kind of like, do you see it? Like this, it's like a mauve kind of dark purplish color and put this in my outer corner. So I told the security guard that I'm alone, but because I'm 18, there's no need to like call my parents or anything. And I'll tell you guys later why I didn't call my parents, but okay, we'll get there. So the security guard just takes me to like this employee area, like through one of those hallways to sit in a room just so I could like tell them everything that happened. So I explained from the beginning about this audition, this short film, blah, 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 blah. And I told them about all the contact information I had from this person, which was an email and a phone number. So the security guard's asking me to call this number. So I'm like, I mean, that's kind of sketchy, but okay, I will, I guess. Just to like verify that it actually is a woman because I told him that I had never called this number before. We call the number and it just beeps. You know, like, rah, 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 like it just beeps. I don't know if that means like the phone was disconnected. I don't know if that means like I was blocked. I don't know, but we called it multiple times and all it ever did was beep. And then he asked me to show him the email and send an email. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So I send an email, I just send a hi. And it said return to sender. Either I was blocked or they deleted my email off their contact list, but it said return to sender. Okay, now I'm going to put just like this kind of bronzy glitter on my lid and more towards my inner corner and make sure you blend so there's no harsh line. And I'm done with my eyeshadow. The last thing I'm going to do is, or not the last thing, what am I talking about? Um, I'm just gonna take some black eyeshadow and use that as my liner. Okay, so at that point, the security guard basically tells me there's nothing else he can do and he asks me if I want him to call anyone and I said no. And before I leave, the security guard just kind of gives me like a little sermon and he's basically telling me that like I need to be more careful and that this is how people get taken. And he's the one that insinuated that this was a trafficking situation so that I'm really, really lucky that I got away and that I followed my instincts once I got to the airport because I was thinking to myself, and I think I said this to him, but like if they had driven, if they had asked me to just go outside the airport and jump into the car because they didn't want to park, I would have done that. Like my, just the way I am, I don't like making people wait. I get really flustered. Like I don't, I just don't process things before I do something all the time. So if I had seen a car that was supposed to be the car picking me up, I would have jumped in and I wouldn't have noticed who was driving it or who was in the car. So I was actually really lucky that this person decided to park the car instead of driving to pick me up. So yeah, I'm like very clearly upset right now and I am I just don't really know what to do. So I call an Uber and I decide that I'm gonna go to Chapman and I'm going to just stay with one of my friends for the weekend and I stayed in her dorm the entire weekend. But I didn't call my parents because one, I was at the age where I just didn't feel comfortable asking them for help or like telling them everything. And I was afraid that if they found out that this had happened, they would never let me go anywhere or do anything alone ever again. Now I'm gonna curl my lashes and put on some mascara. So when I had finally sort of calmed down, I had spent one night in my friend's dorm and I was ready to just like talk about it with her. I told her what had happened. She was obviously super freaked out about it. And I decided that I would show her the page where I found this open casting call to see if it was still there, to see if I could find a page and report it to the police because obviously I had already gone through it. I don't want someone else to go through it. Oh, sorry. And also the mascara I'm using is the Shiseido mascara. It's just like a little sample size, but I really like it. 
So we go on my phone to look up the page and it's not a page anymore, it doesn't exist. So even though the cop, the airport cop, didn't say he was for sure that this was like a trafficking situation, he did insinuate it. And then after seeing all the numbers, the emails, the page, just everything get deleted or blocked from me, it kind of tied everything together for me that this person didn't want to be found. This person was tricking me, blah, 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 blah. This, the woman director never existed. It was probably this man. Everything just kind of came rushing towards me and I pieced it all together. Okay, I'm going to layer this mascara with air volume. So now my dilemma was telling my parents, like figure out a story to tell my parents when I got home. Like, why couldn't they see my short film? I couldn't tell them it didn't exist. So when I got home, I basically just kept telling them that, you know, it was in production, like it was in editing, blah, blah, blah. Like it just takes a long time to put all the pieces together. Eventually they stopped asking. And the reason I finally told them what had happened was because they like remembered that I did this short film after a long period of not seeing it and not asking me any questions about it. And I finally came clean. My lashes get really messy, but I'm okay with that, so. Next thing I'm gonna do is actually put a little bit of eyeshadow slash eyeliner on my bottom eye, which I usually never really do. Like I'll do like a little bit of smoke under here, but I usually never use like a black liner sort of color because I feel like it shuts my eyes. But because I want this look to be a little bit more dramatic, I'm just gonna take a little bit of black shadow and use that to smoke instead of like a little light brown. I'm gonna take this black, carefully smoke it. I always do like, if I feel, if I know I'm gonna be doing my makeup for, if I know I'm gonna be doing my makeup specifically for like a reason or an event where I want my makeup to look more dramatic than usual, I always do a trial run. Even if it's something like my anniversary where I don't think I'm really gonna be doing anything anyways, I will still do a trial run. And then I'm gonna put some of that, um, uh, air volume mascara on my lower lash line. But yeah, that's basically the end of the story. Um, it's not the most crazy story. Like it definitely was scary at the time, but now that I look back on it, I really just feel like thankful that nothing happened especially considering like how naive I was throughout the entire process that like led up to the airport situation. Like I just feel very lucky that nothing more happened. But yeah, that situation really taught me to like ask questions and just to be very cautious about my surroundings and the people I'm talking to and the information I send out. I also don't know if like the police ever got involved or did anything. Like nobody ever called me and asked me anything, but like there are security cameras all over an airport. Like if that guy's car was actually parked in the garage, I'm sure they could have tracked the car and like the license plate or whatever. I mean, I don't know if they did because I don't know if they actually have enough information to do anything or enough evidence to start an investigation. But if they did do that, I wouldn't know about it. Okay. I'm going to just line my lips with a brown Charlotte Tilbury liner. This is in three intense and it's the Pillow Talk liner. Okay. I'm not very precise with my lip liner because I always kind of blend it out anyways. I just like the little shadow of it, but this will, this will be blended out. And then I'm using, um, what is this? The Ultimate by Maybelline, and this is in the shade. Okay, this doesn't say the shade, but this is what it looks like. It's just like a matte little lip color pencil. And that's my makeup. Okay, well. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. Um, don't worry, there's more where that came from. If you guys think that the trauma in my life is just those two stories, the stalker story and this story, you are so wrong. I will come back with more stories for anybody who's interested. I promise you they're all true. 
Um, but yeah, have a great day.